Who would win a fight between a professional MMA fighter and a chimpanzee? This is a pretty exciting duel between a wild animal with certain physical advantages and a technical fighter who, through years of training, also has a few skills and characteristics that will help him against his hairy rival. In this fight, both competitors are prohibited from using weapons. Before we take a closer look at the two, I'd like to know who you think is going to win this battle. Write it in the comments and vote. I'm excited to see the result. For this comparison, we take a common chimpanzee from the wild, which is quite important, because there are also certain groups like the Beely Ape, which is said to be extremely large and strong, which could potentially change our results, but these animals will get their own video. An average male chimp weighs about 50 kilograms and stands 1.3 meters tall. Of course, that doesn't sound like much at first, and in fact, individual specimens can get bigger, but even the largest chimpanzees are still smaller than the average person. These apes only reach a really enormous body weight of up to 90 kilograms in captivity. The size and weight difference within the species is even greater in humans. In the UFC alone, the weight classes range from 53 kilograms minimum in flyweight to 120 kilograms maximum in heavyweight. Due to weight cutting, you can only estimate the correct average weight. In my opinion, it should be around 80 kilograms. Fortunately, the average height can be calculated and it is 1.79 meters or about 5 foot 10. The reach, meaning the arm span, is also quite interesting. This value is always part of the tail of the tape in MMA fights and some people have a much greater reach than height. The difference is called ape index and as you can imagine, apes have an extremely high ape index. The arm span of chimpanzees is approximately 1.5 times their height. Our 1.3 meter tall monkey has a value of plus 65 centimeters and therefore a range of 1.95 meters. The ape index of an average person, on the other hand, is only 1 or plus 0 centimeters. The average UFC fighter with an arm span of 1.84 meters has a value of plus 5 centimeters and thus an ape index of 1.028. Especially in striking, the difference from a negative value like 0.94 Artem Lobov and 1.074 Conor McGregor can make a huge difference. This does not play a major role in the fight against a chimpanzee, since it can absolutely not be compared to an ordinary MMA fight, but I still find it interesting how tiny deviations cause large differences in humans, and apes are just on a whole nother level when it comes to their arm length game. Of course, people have a drastic advantage with kicks. The range and power of a targeted kick by an MMA fighter far exceeds anything that a chimpanzee can achieve in this regard. That is the most interesting point in this comparison. Everyone knows that great apes are stronger than humans, but the difference is much smaller than most people think. Some believe apes are four to eight times stronger than humans because someone might have told them this or they've read in a comment, and the reason for this is a study by John Bowman from 1926. However, its results were refuted 20 years later, and since then, several studies have shown that the difference is not nearly as great as was claimed. In truth, the relative difference in power is only about 35%. In a 1943 study by Finch, all chimpanzees pulled more weight relative to their body mass than humans. But in absolute numbers, it was less in one out of four, the same in two, and only more in one single case. However, three of the four men from the test weighed 65 kilograms or less, which is not that much for an adult male. The heaviest man in the study who weighed 86 kilograms pulled 238 kilograms, that is more than the heaviest chimpanzee was able to do, which weighed 55 kilograms and pulled 220 kilograms. So we can assume that our average MMA fighter with 80 kilograms and an extremely well-trained body is actually stronger than a chimpanzee in absolute terms. If the chimp was as big and heavy as a human, it could of course pull more weight, but that's not the case with our comparison. The reason why great apes are stronger, at least in relation to body weight, is due to their muscle fibers. Examination of the muscles of chimpanzees have shown that they have roughly twice the amount of fast-twitch muscle fibers, which is useful for explosive movements such as jumps or sprints. However, they tire more quickly. Our larger amount of slow-twitch muscle fibers gives us more endurance, which is quite unique among mammals. Almost all other mammals, with the exception of the sloth, have more fast-twitch muscle fibers. This gives us humans pretty much the best endurance among mammals, especially when it comes to long-distance running. 
pure muscle strength is only a small part of the actual fighting power, and especially in the animal kingdom, built-in weapons such as claws, fangs, and the like are often worth a lot more than pure strength. And that's why chimpanzees have a huge advantage despite their small size. Their bodies are better suited for close combat in many ways, and it starts with the skeleton. Perhaps the most important difference for the fight is the protruding jaw with the huge canine teeth. We have the same number of teeth, but chimpanzee canines are much larger, and the longer jaw also allows for a deeper bite. As a result, chimpanzees have a strong weapon, and we do not. Of course, we can also bite, and our biting force is not that bad at 14 kilograms per square centimeter, but without large canines and with our short jaws, we can only do very little damage. In many other ways, the skeleton of a chimpanzee is the same, or at least very similar to, that of a human. A few differences, for example, are that a chimpanzee's palms are slightly longer, as are their fingers, but they have smaller thumbs. The feet differ even more, because chimpanzees cannot run as well as we do, but they can use them as secondary hands and grip things with them. These differences and their extremely long arms would probably make grappling very difficult. I would well imagine that most Brazilian jiu-jitsu techniques would no longer work because of this alone, and then there is an even bigger problem that we will talk about in a moment. Let us assume that there is a confrontation in an open field without any weapons, except for those of your own body. Here, the ape would probably storm out screaming, wildly, as you can see in videos of fights among chimpanzees. In such a moment, a trained and experienced fighter already has a big advantage, because instead of freezing with fear, or having to think about what he is doing, his reflexes can take over. If the ape has gotten close enough and wants to reach for the fighter, you can crack it with a hook or an elbow. It would probably also be important to keep your hands closed at all times, because chimpanzees like to bite their opponent's fingers off. The chimpanzee's bite is its greatest weapon. In my opinion, strikers or all-rounders are much better off in this fight than pure Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters and wrestlers because they fight at a greater distance in which the chimp cannot insert its teeth so easily. If you tried to put a choke on it, the chimpanzee could use the opportunity to bite the forearm or bite the hands and thus cause enormous damage. A choke might work, but you put yourself in direct danger and possibly lose some fingers or even more because chimps like to attack private parts and sensory organs. They can even do that with their feet, which they'll use like hands to grip or tear. Many techniques probably would not work because of this threat alone. MMA fighters who focus on striking not only have more experience in this area, but often also better conditioned hands, elbows, and shins. If you hit a hard bone during a punch or kick, you can easily injure yourself. Years of conditioning is important here, as you know from karate fighters like Stephen Thompson, who strikes a wooden pole with his hands to harden his knuckles, or Tony Ferguson, who is the type of guy to kick metal poles. No blood. Unfortunately, I don't know how hard it would be to knock out a chimpanzee, but these animals are known for their high pain tolerance and their extremely brutal battles with other groups. In addition, they are not predictable, and no sparring in the world could prepare a fighter for a duel with such an opponent. Always try to stay away and keep the monkey at a distance with kicks and, in an emergency, use knees and elbows if he gets too close. In my opinion, that's the best methods to win. Just channel the mantra, I can't let you get close. Human stamina should be an advantage the longer the fight lasts, so it would probably be wise to not use too much energy yourself, but to make the chimpanzee tire itself out. Nevertheless, I think the wild brutality of the great ape would be too much even for some professional fighters. I say the chimpanzee wins the fight in 6 out of 10 cases. The fighter's chances increase and decrease according to his size and mass. A 106 kg striker like Paulo Costa would beat a chimpanzee up. A 70 kg wrestler like Henry Cejudo, on the other hand, would probably have a lot more problems. But what do you think? Who would win this fight? Of course, only hypothetically, because we don't actually want to beat up a chimp, but I'm still looking forward to your opinion, as always. And a little tip if a chimpanzee is one day really going to attack you, try to escape into the water. Wild chimps can't swim and sink like a stone due to their density, and can therefore only walk underwater. Even apes that live among humans and have learned to swim are not particularly quick in the water, so this is definitely a good option to escape. Well, that's it. Until next time, bye!